Hi, welcome to the Entrepreneur's Connection. I'm your hostess, Nancy Cantor, and I'm a business development coach in the Metro West area. And what I love to do is to interview entrepreneurs in this local area who I think are making a difference and are really good examples of what entrepreneurship can bring to a community. Today, I have Bing Yao, who is the franchise owner of Doctors Express. There's one in Natick and one in Marlboro. And we're here to hear about his journey of how he entered into entrepreneurship and why he chose this particular avenue for his contribution to our local communities. Welcome, Bing. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, so I've met you several times at the Chamber, and then I also had the privilege of having you sponsor my latest uh, Dream Factory dinner, which was awesome. And I've always admired you. I've seen you out and about a lot of events, and I'd love to hear, you know, I, I consider you a very successful business person. So how did you enter into entrepreneurship? What was your journey like? Okay. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thanks for the, uh, the compliment. So uh, I actually don't consider myself uh, uh, successful. I think, I think I'm kind of a, uh, I would say, work in progress. Uh, there are a lot more, certainly a lot more successful uh, people that I look up to and, and kind of follow their journeys and so forth. But uh, I, I, I do really very much, very much appreciate your, your compliments there. So I think, I think my, my background, um, originally, I'm, I'm from Hong Kong. So that's where I, I was born and, and raised. Um, and I moved to this country when I was a teenager. Uh, so I went to school here and um, actually you know, did pretty well in school. And, and I uh, and went to work for uh, a consulting company, one of the biggest consulting companies. Uh, there I worked for a few years. And then I um, uh, went back to, to business school. Uh, so during the uh, the business school, it was actually the era of kind of dot com boom, if you will, in the in the late 1990s and the early 2000s, where uh, back in the days uh, in business school, everybody would be pursuing uh, a career in consulting and investment banking and you know big companies like GE and, and and Microsoft and so forth. But at the time, everybody was getting into dot coms, and nobody would even look at. Uh, these big companies and, and traditional uh, career paths. Um, so I kind of got sucked into, uh, you know, to the dot com, if you will. I, I, I was involved in, uh, at the time, several uh, dot coms, and, and which have, you know, raised millions of dollars, uh, but have since uh, collapsed, you know, uh, with the dot com bust. Um, so there, I, I sort of, you know, kind of got my, my, I guess, first taste of, you know, entrepreneurship, if you will. Uh, then I kind of went back to a uh, traditional uh, sort of uh, company I went to, to work for, um, you know, two big, uh, pretty big companies, including IBM as a, as a strategy invest, uh, um, uh, management consultant. So there I, I worked for a few years, and I, I really kind of missed the, the entrepreneurship, if you will. So then I looked uh, around and, and decided to kind of actually get into franchising. So I got into franchising, um, you know, bought uh, the franchising rights uh, for actually another company, uh, that I'm not, I, I'm still involved in, but not uh, not sort of 100% focus on, um, and I was actually pretty good uh, and successful at it. And um, so in 2011, I I sort of got an opportunity to, to come across uh, uh, Doctors Express, which was really an up and coming uh, uh, franchising uh, concept in 2010. They started franchising in 2010, um, which you know even right now. Uh, uh, Franchising in healthcare is, is just unheard of. Nobody is in, in healthcare is really growing uh, using the franchising model. So I kind of looked at it and, 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 um, and, and really thought it was very interesting. And, and I've always wanted to kind of get into to, uh, uh, healthcare because I, I see that as an industry that's uh, quote unquote recession resistant. You know, because uh, good and bad times, unfortunately, we all get sick, and, and, um, and Doctors Express is one of these models that, that offer, I think, a very good solution to uh, consumers uh, and patients at large out there. Um, so I decided to get involved, and, and I bought the, the franchise, uh, franchising right uh, for three locations, and I've decided to, because I've been doing uh, business in the Metro West area, and, and that's the area that I have a lot of connections and, and familiarity, and um, um, and, and, uh, and, and really interested in. So I decided to, to basically uh, open up my first uh, uh, franchise location in Natick, Massachusetts uh, in uh, really 2012 is when we opened. And then uh, just last year, uh, actually in 2014, we opened up a second location 
in, in Marlboro, and we're actually looking for uh, a third location in Metro West as well. Oh, great. So you've had quite a journey. So just a couple of questions. Yes. So do you, what school did you go to? Did you go here in the Boston <coughs> area? Is that what brought you here? or? No. I uh, So undergrad, I went to uh, Ohio State. Um, I've, I've actually been kind of a Big Ten, you know, Midwest guy. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so for undergrad, I went to Ohio State. For grad school, I went to Northwestern, the Kellogg School of Management. Um, which actually is one of the, the, the best um, business schools in the country. Nice. So, yeah, so I, there I, I got very, very good sort of uh, business training, if you will. Um, but, of course, just like any entrepreneur, you need the, uh, the hands-on, the kind experience. of the practical. Yeah, sure. you need to live it. You need to, mm -hmm. to I think one of the, my mentors uh, used to, to say to me that as an entrepreneur, I mean, or, or any business manager, you really need to have the experience of uh, having, firing, and hiring people. Uh, otherwise, it, 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 you, you can't really kind of relate to that, that entrepreneurship, and you have to, to actually have some you know, money in the, in, the, you know, in the game, money, you know, uh, skin in the game to, to really kind of feel the pain uh, that associated with uh, uh, the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur. And I can just tell you that uh, I haven't been an entrepreneur now for uh, uh, close to 10 years. I, I, um, I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, I, I know uh, certainly uh, there are many um, uh, nights of, uh, you know, lack of sleep and, and um, but there's also a lot of, um, you know, satisfaction that, that comes with it as well. What, what would you say, so a couple things, yeah. do you think your experience during the dot com era, you know, when it was really big and a lot of people were getting into entrepreneurship, a lot of things went way up and then way down. You know, do you think that's colored things for you, or what did you learn during that period in your engagement in the dot-com era? Yeah, no, I think I think it, I actually learned a lot. I think I think from um, you know I, I, I learned um, you know that, that there's a really a truly a business cycle. I mean, there's there's uh, the ups and downs, and and a business can. Uh, I mean, the, one of the businesses that I got involved in uh, went from you know ten people uh, to two hundred people really within a matter of a couple of months. Wow. And they raised, uh, you know, we raised over 150 million dollars, which was lost within a year. So that wow. tells you sort of like the, the the boom and bust. So I think I really, you know, learned just as a, as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur that I think I think it naturally I'm a very positive person. I think my wife will, will, will say that I'm, I'm overly optimistic about everything. I, I'm just not afraid to to try new things, and, and sometimes I, I, I do before I ask, which, you know, can be good and bad, you know, as an entrepreneur, but, um, but I think, you know, the dot-com um, bus, I think, really has given me a different perspective and, and, and kind of look at things that, well, you know, uh, things may not, um, you know, things that goes up will also come down, right? So, okay. so I kind of learned that, and, and I think um, really kind of, I guess, tailor my, my approach, my, my mentality, my, my planning, um, kind of accordingly. Okay, so yeah. maybe a little bit more realistic. Maybe a little bit more realistic. A little bit more. Um, maybe there. Maybe I do need to come with a come up with a plan B versus before. I would just say, okay, plan A is is the the one that I'm going with, and um, failing is was just not in my thoughts at all um, in the in the early days. But um, uh, but that certainly is not not the case now. I I I I, I think I'm I'm more. I think I'm still more on the optimistic, optimistic side, but I think I'm, I'm more towards the middle now yeah. uh, on the optimistic, pessimistic kind of a, a spectrum. I, I think that sounds healthy. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I, used to, um, I used to have a yoga teacher, and he used to talk about, you know, you've got the positive mind, you've got the negative mind, but what you're out to cultivate is the neutral mind. And from that neutral mind, you have a place of power. Mm. And it sounds like your experience has brought you to that place. Yeah which is fantastic. So it sounds like you've had a lot of good experience. So you're saying before that uh, in working with, you know, in the process of owning and maybe even looking for another location, there's been a lot of successes and maybe some challenges. So why don't we start with the successes? What's, what's been working? Yeah, so I think, I think what's been uh, working for Doctors Express, I mean, it's just an, an excellent uh, concept and, and model to deliver a uh, a more cost-effective and, and a more accessible, you know, healthcare model to consumers. And here in Massachusetts, uh, I think I may have mentioned it to you, uh, we have a shortage of primary care doctors, as, as you know, most people have, uh, you know, hear about it on, in the news and so forth. And, and that problem is, is just getting, you know, worse and worse. And, and 80, 90% of us 
or you know, knocking woods otherwise healthy, you know, we don't really need to, to unfortunately go to, go to our doctors on a regular basis. Um, but when we do um, need to be seen, when we are sick and injured, and sometimes we do need to go see a doctor. With a shortage, uh, shortage of primary care doctors, uh, a lot of us can't really get into to get an appointment to see our, our primary care doctors. So what Doctors Express come in is that we offer a more accessible, convenient, and more cost-effective model um, to provide to people as an alternative, if they can't get in to see their primary care doctors, they, want, they don't want to go to the ER, they can just come in to visit one of our centers on a walk-in, uh, no referral, no appointment basis. So, oh, wow. and it, it's, it's just very convenient, and, and as a busy person yourself, I mean, I'm sure you, you appreciate the fact that um, you don't have to be on the phone and, and trying to make an appointment with, with, with uh, your doctor. Uh, when you need something done, you just, you know, go get it. And which is really, you know, more and more uh, sort of today's consumers are kind of used to. You know, we want something done, we want something done now, right? Uh, we're sick now, we want to be taken care of now as opposed to getting an appointment next Tuesday, you know, when, you know, we're here on Friday or, or something like that. So, um, so Doctors Express, I think that one of the successes is really, I think we quickly really got accepted by the, uh, by the community at large. And, and in, in Natick, we quickly, you know, ramp up the patient um, uh, you know, count, and and I think that's uh, uh, one of the, the main reasons. I think it has to do with um, our, our just relentless, uh, uh, relentless, uh, 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 really uh, attention to uh, to sort of patient care and the customer service side of things, and we really treat every single pa uh, patients. Uh, the best that we can, we we uh, we offer them coffee in, in the waiting room, snacks. Uh, we um, and our staff is just very polite, and, and you know, from the doctors to the receptionists and everything else. So, um, so, so I think I think just within um, a, a very quick amount of time, I think I think we got to a point where uh, the business is 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 really you know I would say pretty good and self sustaining. So that's when I started kind of quickly looking for uh, second locations, and and Marble has been kind of the same way. In fact, it it it's, has ramped up I think quicker than when Natick was because. Um, uh, three and a half years later now, urgent care uh, is becoming more accepted um, you know, by the community. And, and sure. when I was starting uh, Natick three and a half years ago, I, I would go out there to, to different community events and talk to people about, hey, you know, I, I do urgent care. And most of the answers uh, at the point were, urgent care, what, what is that? Do you, do you have real doctors? And, but now... Real doctors. Yeah, yes, we do. But, but now, uh, 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 more often than not, people will say, oh, yeah, doctors, I've been, I've been there. You guys were excellent. And, and so more and more, I can, I can literally feel and, 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 you know, that, that the, the, uh, the pendulum has, has swung to the, to the other end. And now people uh, do know what urgent care is, and they, they do come when they have, you know, have the need. They know that, that it's not life-threatening. Um, you know, they'd much rather uh, come to an urgent care center like Doctors Express than going to the ER. That's great. So, you know, in terms of people listening here today, um, you know, maybe if you could go into some of the criteria, because you brought up some really good points. Like, you got into this a little before the curve, the popularity curve. Mm -hmm. You know, people weren't all talking about urgent care and where do I find it. But for some reason, maybe <coughs> through your past business savvy that, you know, things that you learned, you know, when you are looking at a franchise, what are some of the criteria? What did you look at that yeah. had you decide like this was a good one to do? Yeah, like like I said, I, I look at businesses that are um, kind of recession resistant, so to speak, right? Okay. I mean, even if you, I mean, you know what kind of my my, my previous uh, uh, franchising is. I mean, it's 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 it kind of in the same category as recession resistant, right? So, which means good and bad times during recession or during you know boom times. People still need your products and services, right? So, okay. so that, to me, that's kind of my criteria. Um, so that's kind of what I one of the things that, that I look for uh, in a business or in a in a franchise, right? Uh, and then I, I would say that that uh, for a franchise, uh, I would look for something that uh, you have to sort of as an entrepreneur kind of know what your your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, so sort of knowing you know what you're good at, you know some people are good at, at, at speaking, they're good at sales, they're good at people engagement. Some people are critical thinkers, you know that kind of thing. I think you have to kind of know what you're strong at, and then just trying to match up, um, you know the, the business and what the what the needs are for that business, maybe with your 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 strengths and, and weaknesses, right? Uh, I, I just give you an example. I mean healthcare. 
I know I'm kind of good at, at, at managing people and good at you know managing a P&L and, and finances and marketing and, and so forth, but uh, I don't know anything about healthcare. You know, I've been in businesses where uh, you as a as a willing buyer, I'm a, a seller. I sell you a product and uh, or a service, and you're happy with it. You pay me. End of story, right? But in healthcare, because of a third party uh, uh, payer system, it's different. You know, me as a, a as a seller of a service, you as a buyer. You could be 100%, 110% happy with what I uh, just gave you. I have to rely on your insurance company to pay me, which I may not get paid for whatever reason, right? So that's kind of the, the, the nuance uh, that I actually had to learn. Um, and, and also with you know, uh, healthcare in, in our state is, is really kind of, um, I guess I would say, a, a kind of a big boy business, right? I mean, it's, it's dominated by by big hospital groups, um, you know, uh, you know, you know, some of them, you know, partners and, and so forth. Sure. So it's very hard for little, you know, they, you know, I always consider our, ourselves kind of little guys to really kind of break into uh, to the landscape, uh, which, by the way, we've successfully done. I mean, Doctors Express, uh, by the end of last year, was uh, we had 18 locations, was easily the biggest. Uh, uh, urgent care network in in the state. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So so yeah. So that 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 was uh, that was not easy done. And, and since then, these big boys, I think they've been kind of chasing us. And and you know, uh, uh, you what got, does that look like? Um, well, it it's it. You see, the the scary thing is that they they have a lot more money and a lot more you know, leverage than than, than we do, right? So, uh, but I think I think we do have the sort of the first mover advantage. We we are pre established within the communities that we're in. Um, and I think we continue to focus on, the, on, on really the details and, and being involved in the communities. I mean, you, you mentioned at the outset that I, I sponsor one of the Dream Factory um, you know, events, which, by the way, was lovely and, and probably one of the best uh, 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 presentations or speeches that I've, that I've heard uh, from your guests. Um, but the, the, it, 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 I, think, I think the way that we sort of approach our business is very much that community focus, and that's why we chose to to be involved in, in the community. We chose to to be in, uh, actively involved in the chambers, in the local schools, and because we see that as our differentiators. Because we know that our um, competitors, they're bigger. They can't really kind of. I mean, they of course they get involved in the communities, but they can't get involved in the communities. I think at the at the level that we get involved in. You know, I attend B B N I meetings. I I, you know, the local chambers, I'm very active. Um, the big boys cannot, you know, get to the level that I think I, I can get to, at least, you know, in my mind. I think that's kind of the, the approach that, that we've taken, and, and uh, that's why, you know, even though they have more, more money, I think we uh, are more attached to the communities. So okay. that's, that's kind of, you know, the, our way of, I guess, fending off the, the competition. But uh, big, mo big, no mistakes about it. I think that's uh, one of the scarier, uh, scarier things uh, associated with entrepreneurship is, is competition is always going to gonna, gonna come in and, and you're always going to have bigger and, 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 and better funded uh, competitors uh, trying to, to compete for, uh, you know, with you and so forth. Um, and I think you just have to, as a business per uh, person, you just have to, to anticipate them and, and really um, uh, make sure that you kind of keep an eye you know, on the ball uh, and execute. Right, and it yeah. sounds like given that you're looking for a third location is that you have developed your system of how to have them be beneficial to communities, you know, and, and be known in communities. And I think people see you as the face of Doctors Express, so it's not just a nebulous business, it's you. And you know that you're there at my dinner, meeting people. Like I think that just makes a difference. You know, and there were a lot of people there who had come. There were a lot of people there who had never come. So just seeing your face, knowing you're there, being able to connect with you, I think does make a difference. And I think in terms of entrepreneurship, I guess I think more, you know, franchises or smaller businesses, that that is the selling card. You know, yeah. obviously customer service, but in order to service customers, you have to be known. Yeah. No, I, I think I think I mean I think I think you've asked uh, the the question really uh, about franchising. To to me, I think I think I'm really very well positioned with with this particular franchise, right? I mean, nationwide, the franchise we have a network of 150 locations in 25 states. Okay, so we're one of 150 locations. With, uh, I think the second or the third largest urgent care network in the country. Um, 
So I feel like I'm, I'm being backed up by a, a fairly large infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. Yet I have the, because it's my business, right? I, I have the, uh, really the attention and, and the incentives to, um, to really run the business uh, in order to make, make sure that the business is successful at, the lo at each location level. Sure. Um, one thing that, you know, we, we are very active in social media, as I'm sure you are. We're active in Facebook, Twitter, and, and, and all, these, all these things. Uh, I'm still the, the one who, you know, if we, we have a lot of engagements on Facebook with actual patients, would-be patients, and, you know, even sometimes critics. Um, I'm still actively engaging them myself with them on Facebook. So if you, if you go to our Facebook, which by the way, in Aden, we have over 12,000 likes, um, which we're actually more likes than, than Mass General. You know, so really? It, well, it, now it, I'm really impressed. Yeah, it's, it's, it, which, which I think is, is really no easy task. But, but even right now, uh, with, with so many likes and so many fans, uh, I am still the one who, if you, if you post a question on Facebook asking, hey, do you take this in, in insurance? I'm the one who answers it. You know, because I just feel that it's, it's so important um, to really stay engaged, um, you know, with the community uh, because within the five mile radius is those are the, the, the people that we serve. Yeah, and those great. are the, 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 the people, you know, some from Ashland, some from Hopkinton, Marlboro, you know, they are, they're Metro West people. And, right. and, you know, we have to make sure that, that we're connected, we stay connected with them. Right. And I think it sounds to me like that's a differentiating factor with you, that you really understand that. You know, you've picked a good business, like you said, it's recession-proof. But also, too, I think sometimes with franchise owners, I worked with somebody who owned another franchise, and I think the big breakthrough for him is that he realized he had to think like an entrepreneur from that visionary leadership, that it, just because you have a franchise, you don't just expect the franchise has a vision. The individual owner of the franchise has to have a vision, and that's what I hear very clearly with you, that you have a vision, and you also have picked ways of getting it out there that really fit your personality and what your strengths are. Mm -hmm. You know, like you've done it in a very smart, savvy way, and you really have become the face of these organizations. And with the extreme customer care, it's worked really, really well. I mean, what do you see as the future? I mean, for you in terms of growth and where you want to go with your business. <laughs> well, uh, I hope to, to, to be able to find um, our, our third location and open up that third location as, as quickly as possible. Um, and in that third location, like I mentioned, would be in the Metro West area because that's kind of uh, the area that, um, that uh, you know, our, our, our team, you know, comes from. You know, 90% uh, of our, our team actually... Uh, they, they, they work as well as live in the communities, right? Nice. So, um, and, um, so, so that's kind of my immediate goal, if you will. But I think in, in a couple of years, um, you, you really, I think, will see um, the urgent care um, business, I think, starting to kind of mature a little bit uh, in Massachusetts uh, with just the, uh, the different uh, players coming into the game and so forth. I think in a couple of years, the, the uh, people... Um, hopefully, would not even think about going to the ER uh, when they have just a small cut or uh, rashes or anything like that, which actually I think would be a good thing overall for the healthcare uh, industry because right now our ERs are congested. And that's why, you know, Massachusetts has one of the worst uh, ER wait time in the country. Yeah. Um, so, so we hope to, to kind of in a small way, right, uh, kind of improve on that. Um, but uh, I, I, I really, I think, I think the healthcare industry is, is really big enough for, for all these players that are coming in. And I think we've carved out a, a fairly nice uh, a, a chunk uh, for ourselves because of our, our again, our, um, our attention to the details. We sort of know what uh, the consumers and patient base uh, want, want from us and so forth, and we'll continue on that. And I, I think it, it also we will uh, sort of keep uh, our ears on the ground, uh, you know, also uh, looking at anything that's kind of in the future. For example, one of the, the upcoming thing now is, is, is telemedicine. So we have to kind of explore um, the telemedicine, you know, side of things as well and see if it makes sense for us to be maybe using some telemedicine uh, technology and infrastructure at our centers to, again, you know, further improve the, the patient experience um, and their, their service level. That's awesome. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's an interesting uh, direction. So we have three minutes left. So is there any word of advice that you have to people who are listening about entrepreneurship? 
Like, what's the biggest lesson you've learned or a piece of advice you could give somebody who's in entrepreneurship or thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I mentioned, you know, kind of know yourself, know your, your strengths and weaknesses. But, um, but I, I would say that, that uh, I, I have a lot of friends and, and sort of uh, want to be entrepreneurs, right? I think what's um, always, uh, you know, I, I think the, the, the tougher thing is, is to take that first step. Right, so so if you know that that that's kind of what you always wanted to do, and, and you want to give it a try, I I would just suggest that that um, go ahead and try it. I mean, that when I when I uh, took my first step, um, it was you know I think fairly risky. I had a pretty good job at uh, you know with pretty good pay and so forth, and uh, I had to to give that all up to to start the first uh, take the first step, and so. Sure. But uh, I can tell you that that looking back, uh, I'm glad I did, and 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 I think just as any any future entrepreneurs and, and any um, anybody who's thinking about doing that and pursuing that that dream, um, I mean you need to be careful and plan it and, and make sure that again you know kind of what you're you're good at and and uh, don't um, you know hastily get into something that you shouldn't have. But but again, it's important to just uh, take that first step and. And, and also, I think another advice that I would give you is that really, depending on the kind of business that you have, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for my business, it makes sense because it's retail-based, it's very community-driven. Um, be involved in the community. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of uh, business leaders such as yourself. Um, you know, learn from them and, and be involved, learn from them. Um, you, you use, I think, the term uh, face of the business. Be the face of your business and, and live it, breathe it every day. Um, I remember when I first opened uh, the native location, I was there every day for the whole, for the whole year. Uh, I mean, that's, <laughs> you know. You don't have to be. Yeah, I don't have to be, but I, I, I did and, 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 and because I wanted to. I wanted to make sure that it, it got off the ground and so forth. Um, but, you know, that's, that's uh, but, but taking that first step is very important and being involved in the community. Okay, great. Okay, good. So awesome advice. So I just want to thank you, Bing, for being with us here today. I'm speaking with Bing Yao from Doctors Express. Uh, I'm Nancy Cantor of the Entrepreneurs Connection. And we're here to educate you about entrepreneurship. I'm a business development coach. I have programs, workshops. So check out our website, theentrepreneursconnection.com, and find out more about how you can step into entrepreneurship or develop your business. Thank you, Bing, for being here today. Thank you so much. And I, I in some ways, I hope not to see you at Doctors <laughs> Express, but I am yes. really glad that you're there when I need you. Absolutely. So thanks so much. Thank and you, Nancy. Yes, you're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in today, and we'll see you next time on the Entrepreneur's Connection.